Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Good morning. Welcome to worship at our Savior's this morning. I'm Pastor Kiri. We have a worship assistant this morning. Abby Paulson is here. Thank you to Abby for being here. Both services got up bright and early on a Sunday morning, so thank you, Abby. Uh, if you are new to our Saviors, a special welcome to you. Uh, we do have a connection card that's in the pew pocket in front of you. If you could fill that out and turn it in at the reception desk, that would be awesome. If you're worshiping online, we have a connection card on our website under Connect. So, um, hey, Larry, the, the front row talk here is that you should keep playing the rain stick through the entire service and maybe we'll get some rain. <laughs> The whole service? I don't know. I felt I heard four drops first thing this morning, and then it quit. So keep playing that rain stick. Yeah. Just a couple highlights of things coming up. Next Sunday is our Social Justice Forum on scams targeting seniors. We have a resource person coming from Minnesota Senior Linkage. Please note that that is just one forum. So if this is your regular service, the forum is at 930. You're invited to come early. That'll be in room 122. So again, it's if you are a senior or maybe you have a senior adult in your life, a parent, um, I know both sides of our family has had recent incidents with being targeted for scams. So let's come and get some good information and make sure that we can keep our, our, our seniors safe. Um, we also are excited that for our, our second year now, we're going to have a presence at both the Ham Lake Freedom Festival and East Bethel Booster Days. So Lisa Ricken Kassler is heading up those booths. She's looking for people to be at the booth and to greet people as they come by. So you can see on your happenings how to reach out to her and let her know if you might be available. And then finally, um, some sad news. Notice of two members of our saviors who have passed away. First, Maggie Lotvala. There's Maggie. Her service is going to be here at our saviors Tuesday at 11 a.m. with visitation one hour prior. And then we also learned yesterday that uh, a member of our saviors, he's been in Florida most recently, Ed Drops passed away. Ed is the father of Diane Strandlin. Some of you know Diane from Bible study. Um, so his uh, service arrangements are pending. Well, those are all of the announcements for this morning. So I invite you to stand as you're able. And in our places, we will greet one another with God's peace, with a, with a smile or a wave. Remain standing as we sing our opening song. One, two, three.
us a name above every other name. And Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. today we celebrate fathers, fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers. For those of us anointed with that gift, I ask that you are forever grateful. For those who wrong their fathers, whose dreams are unfulfilled, I ask that you wrap your arms around them and guide their souls to peace. For those who struggle to be fathers, for those whose burdens carry them away, 
those whose presence is not what they want it to be. I ask that you rescue them in the name of your love and grace and goodness. Be with us today, Lord, as we celebrate this amazing gift of fatherhood. Be with those who struggle, with those who rejoice, with those who are constantly seeking you. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Michael. Well, it is time for the children's offering and children's message. So come on up. You know what to do. Come on up here. You, you raced up too fast. Leisha's got the milk can for the offering. There you go. All right, this looks like a good group for the activity that I have. Stand up. I want you to stand up. And we are going to play Simon Says. Do you remember how this goes? So if I say Simon Says, what are you going to do? You're going to do it. If I don't say Simon Says, don't do it. Okay, ready? Simon Says, touch your nose. Simon Says, do five jumping jacks. Simon says, turn around and wave to everyone. Okay, uh, now cross your arms and look mad. Oh, you guys do so great at this. Okay, so we are going to change it up a little bit now. And we're going to do one called The Bible Says. So if it starts with The Bible Says, you're going to? And if it doesn't start with The Bible Says, you're going to? Okay, are you ready? The Bible says, lift your hands in praise to God. Okay, the Bible says, sing praise to God with the word alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Okay, now bow down and worship idols. Oh, you guys are good. All right. We're done with the game, so no more Simon Says. The Bible says you can sit down. We're going to sit down together and talk for just a little bit. Wow, you did great. Well, that last part, bow down and worship idols, that's kind of what happened to the people we're going to talk about in our Bible story for today. Their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, better known in Veggie Tales as Rakshak and Benny. Has anyone seen that? The Veggie Tales, Rakshak and Benny. Hey, parents, you can look it up on YouTube. Uh-huh. It's pretty awesome. So in the Bible story, Rack, Shack, and Benny, the king told all the people they were to bow down and worship this huge statue he had made out of gold. And Rack, Shack, and Benny, they worshiped God. And they knew that the Bible said that God said, I am the Lord your God. You shall not worship other gods. So they did just what you guys did. When the king said, bow down and worship other gods, what did they do? They stood there, and they didn't do it. And how do you think the king felt about that? Mad, and instead of stomping off, instead, he ordered them to be thrown into the fiery furnace. For real. Super scary. And they had said, you know what, we're not going to worship your gods. We believe our God will protect us. And even if God doesn't, we will be okay. And so the king sent people to look the next day to see what had happened. And guess what? They were okay. They were in the furnace. They were walking around. Not only that, there weren't just three people in the furnace. There was a fourth person who was God who had joined them. And the king, after all of this, realized their God is so powerful, I am going to worship that God. So he joined them in praising God. And I think what this story kind of shows us is that there are hard things in life that we have to face. And sometimes hard decisions, and it's hard to follow God, isn't it? It is sometimes hard to follow God. But God calls us to follow and to be faithful, and God promises that there will be blessings for us. All right, shall we say a prayer? Will you pray after me? Dear God, we thank you 
for your faithfulness. Help us to follow you and be faithful to you. Amen. Okay, so now if you want to go be part of an activity, you can go with Leisha out the middle doors, or if you want to go back to your parents, you can do that. from Daniel. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you'll be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what god will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude towards them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in his amazement and asked his advisors, Weren't there three men that you tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, Certainly, your majesty. He said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was not the smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than worship or serve any other god except their own god. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Great job, Abby. That's a lot of names. All over and over again, right? Well, I have created my own Father's Day sermon tradition here at Our Saviors, and that is to start my sermon with a joke on Father's Day. So... Here goes this year's special rendition. A priest, a minister, and a rabbit walk into a bar. The bartender says to the rabbit, what'll you have? And the rabbit says, I don't know. I'm just be here, here because of autocorrect. Talk to someone else or Siri if you don't quite get it. Uh, that one came out during a barrage of dad jokes around the bonfire a couple of nights ago. So happy Father's Day to those often courageous people in our lives and in our community, the dads. Uh, we are in the second week of this series called Profiles in Courage. And we're looking at some Old Testament figures and their particular form of courage that made them faithful to God. But to start, I'm going to read some quotes that speak to courage, and I want to see if anyone can guess who said them. All right? Here's the first one. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. 
That's Helen Keller. Next one. Courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the assessment that something else is more important than fear. <gasps> Franklin D. Roosevelt. We may have a cheater in the back there. All right. Courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. That was Churchill. Okay, now Sam, you're going to... Because someone might actually get this one. There's kind of, kind of a hint in it. Courage is being scared to death and saddling up anyway. John Wayne. That's the one that I've had people get before. Um, how about this one? Creativity takes courage. That's Henry Matisse. Finally, here's the last one. Have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They show someone all... They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. That is a Steve Jobs quote. Well, today as we explore this series, Profiles in Courage, we're going to look at another quote. Something a group, this group of guys said that's recorded into the Old Testament. During this series, we're digging into the Old Testament stories to examine the lives of men and women who came face to face against incredible challenges and somehow were able to find the courage to move forward. So what can we learn from their stories? How might their words help us be courageous too? I think it was courageous of Abby to read that lesson with all of those bumbled names. Um, in today's story, which, which Abby read, it is that story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or as I mentioned, the Veggie Tales version with Rakshak and Benny. Have any of you seen that, shown your kids? Um, in the VeggieTales version, they are asked to bow down and worship a chocolate bunny, by the way. So you want to see this. Well, again, sort of long story short, King Nebuchadnezzar was asserting his power, and Rakshak and Benny stood up to him. They wouldn't bow down to his statue, his huge golden idol, because they knew their scripture. They knew their first commandment which is, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods. The king found out everyone in the land bowed down as he had ordered except Rakshak and Benny. So he called them in and gave them an ultimatum. When the music plays, either you bow down or you will get thrown in the fiery furnace. Talk about something like a high-stakes game of musical chairs, huh? Um... This was no easy decision for them, but ultimately, they said this quote. King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Whoa. In the face of the furnace, these men look at the king and say, the God we serve is able to save us, but even if he doesn't, we won't bow down. I think that takes some guts. That takes some courage. And the music played, and they stood still. King Nebuchadnezzar, like a parent who gives an ultimatum, knew he needed to follow through or his authority would be undermined, and so he ordered the three guys to be thrown into the furnace. And what he expects to happen doesn't. He gets a report that not only are they not burnt up, they are no longer tied up, but rather walking around in there. And there are four men, not three, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Now this is an ancient story but a modern problem. All of us, one way or another, sooner or later, if we're serious about our relationship with God, if we're committed to being followers of Jesus, we will face times when we are pressured to bow down to idols. Now, it pro might not be a 90-foot-tall golden statue or a chocolate bunny, but I mean other kinds of idols. Like, Maybe at work you're being asked to do certain things or work certain kinds of hours that keep you from living by God's priorities for your life. That idol's name is promotion or success 
And if you don't bow, maybe the furnace is getting passed over or even getting fired. Our students have to deal with idols. They're told to bow down to every day. Acceptance, popularity, reputation. And if you don't bow, maybe the fire is being excluded or ridiculed. Or maybe the idol is being stuck, wanting things to stay the same despite a changing world, pressing you to change and to meet people where they are. Sooner or later, every one of us feels the pressure to bow down to idols. We feel the pressure to do this or go there or buy this or achieve that. There are all sorts of idols around us, idols that can lead us away from our devotion to God. So the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego tells us that many times when we don't bow, we will find ourselves in the furnace. But here is the first lesson we can learn from their story. Lesson number one, God will meet us in the furnace. If you were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, wouldn't you have wanted God to show up before you got thrown into the fiery furnace? You know they wanted to be delivered from the fire, but God decided to deliver them in the fire instead. Sometimes God does deliver us from the fire, but sometimes God intervenes often when we are right in it. I don't know what pressure you're facing, what kind of fire is coming your way, if you stand your ground and do what God wants you to do, but whatever the furnace may be, if God can deliver you from it, but if not, God will meet you in it. So keep faith. There's a second lesson we learned from this story. So after Nebuchadnezzar sees that the true God is with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he praises their God, and their God becomes his God. So lesson number two is God will reach others through the furnace. Uh, many times we have no idea how what we're going through impacts the other people that are around us. So whatever fire you're going through or might go through, whatever tough thing God is asking you to do, part of God's grace may be that others are reached through it. And I see it happening all the time. Um, people who are going through relational struggles or struggles with addiction or struggles in their career, time and again we'll see God use their furnaces to touch the lives of other people. God will not only meet you in the fire, but God will reach others through it. So have faith. And finally, lesson number three is this. God will bless you through the furnace. Uh, after coming out of the furnace, here's a bit of what happens to those three. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. He gives them new positions new opportunities to serve, new places to influence, new ways to contribute. Something will happen on the other side. We usually can't predict what, but often there is growth and newness of life and things we couldn't previously see come to pass. Well, this past Wednesday, we celebrated Founders Day uh, at the first of our summer chapel worship services. And I think back to 151 years ago and wonder what did our founders imagine when they started our church what did they need in their lives what furnaces had they come through to get here and could they have pictured the furnaces that lie ahead not just in their lives but in the world my gosh and how this church would continue to serve through all these decades I wonder, like lesson number one, did they know that God would meet them and that God would meet us in our hardest of days? I wonder. But they did have faith. Uh, lesson number two, I don't know that they could picture who the others God would reach might be. Did they have any idea that 150 years later, we would still be here, this church would be here, that there would be baptisms and marriages and funerals, that people would share the love of God by the ways they show up for each other, by the ways you all support each other and care for each other. 
And finally, lesson number three, did they wonder how they might be blessed through the furnace? What blessings did they themselves receive by going through what they did? By coming to a new wild place and starting a church? I wonder. Today we give thanks for the courage and the faithfulness of the generations. We celebrate that they took that risk, that they, against a lot of odds, built this church. And by church, I mean a church community, people, relationships that have lived on for generation to generation. From their courage, God's love has been made known all the way through to us in this time and this place. So today, I ask those of us who are gathered here, what courage shall we ask for from God? What risk might God lead us to so that we can grow closer to God and that others' lives are changed? And may this be our prayer. We now are the founders of what God is about to do in this time and place, and so may we pray for God to lead us in how we shall go. Thanks be to God. Amen. He's never let me down.
Please join me as we pray for God's mercy and a world in need. God, give this community the courage to follow where you are leading. Guide us and lead us so that we may grow closer to you and so others' lives are changed. On this Father's Day, we pray for fathers we love and for fathers we struggle to love, for adoptive fathers, stepfathers, and foster fathers, for those who long to be fathers, for men in our lives who have loved and supported us, for men who have nurtured us in the faith. Give courage, wisdom, and strength. Loving God, you hear the cries of those who are marginalized or cast out. On this Juneteenth holiday, guide us to continually work towards the end of oppression in all of its forms. Bring true freedom and flourishing to all of your beloved children. God of growth and wonder, we give thanks for the ministry and new things experienced by those who were in part of the Our Savior's Youth mission trip this past week. May the fire ignited in their work and their relationships continue to burn their everyday lives. God of grace and healing, we pray for those who suffer and are in need of healing. Paul Wyatt, Liz Clifton, Bruce Allen, Helen Jernigan, Bob Porches, Jess, Marge Lindquist, Sue Casey, Tyson Carr, Jim Zyke, Michelle Brown, Brittany Danielson, Audrey Lundstrom, Randy Hill Jr., Lynn Gleason, Michelle Leslie, David Kappelhoff, Jovita Romero, Cherry, and Pat Nelson. We pray that you would comfort all those who mourn and walk with them as we learn to live with the loss of our loved ones. We remember especially Ginger and Eric Johnson on the death of Ginger's mother, Edith, Diane and Kurt, Lund Diane and Kurt Strandlund on the death of Diane's father, Ed Drops, and we pray for the family of Maggie Latvala and the family of Rick Mike as they grieve the loss of their loved ones. For these and all prayers that we bring before you today, God, we ask for your continued presence and guidance. Amen. Well, today we celebrate the generations that have come before us and the ways that they have uh, built a church and the gift that they give us of faith and the faith that we now get to pass on. And so uh, as we give our offerings, we know that it goes to sp sharing God's love and sharing God's faith in this community and for years to come. So uh, there are various ways you can give. You can place your offering in the baskets by the doors as you leave today. You can also always mail in a check. You can give through the Vanco app or you can give through the Our Saviors website, OurSaviorsLC.org. Uh, let's say a prayer as we give thanks to God for all these gifts. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Give us glad and generous hearts that your love would bring about the healing of the world through us. Gratefully we pray. Amen. Well, as we prepare to receive communion uh, and share this meal of love and forgiveness and God's grace, that Jesus has given us, know that all who are here are welcome to receive communion here at our Savior's. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join together as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Uh, just a few instructions about communion. Uh, when the servers are ready at the front of your section, they'll give you a nod. Go ahead and come forward, starting from front to back. Middle sections, you'll come up the middle aisle and go back on those side aisles. Outside sections, you'll come up along the wall and then go back by those same aisles. When you reach your communion station, simply hold out your hands. We'll drop a wafer into your hands. You can step to the next server who has the chalice. 
dip your wafer into the chalice. The larger part is red, that is wine. The smaller part is white, that is grape juice. You may then eat those together and return to your seats. Uh, if you have someone with you who doesn't take communion, please have them come forward for a blessing. And if you need gluten-free, we've got gluten-free wafers on the stands at the front of each section. More details are on your happenings. So for those who may be communing in place or at home, hear these words as you receive the meal, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. I invite the communion servers forward. My soul so weary when troubles come and my heart burdened be then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me you raise me so I can stand on mountains You raise me up To walk on stormy sea I am strong When I am on your shoulders You raise me up To more than I can be There is no life no life without its hunger Each restless heart beats so imperfectly But when you come and I am filled with wonder Sometimes I think I glimpse eternity You raise me so I can stand on mountains You raise me up To walk on stormy seas I am strong When I am on your shoulders You raise me up To more than I can be stand on mountains you raise me up to walk on stormy seas I am strong when I am on your shoulders you raise me up to more than I can be I am strong when I am on your shoulders you raise me up to more than I can be Please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. 
Generous God, thank you for feeding us at your holy table. Send us now, strengthened by this meal, to speak out with courage, break down divisions, build bridges of understanding, and serve others in your name. Amen. And receive the blessing. The God who created the cosmos, the God who is with you always, bless you and sustain you, giving you courage and peace. Amen. All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low, I'm going to sing wherever I go. All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low, I'm going to sing wherever I go. God is for me. He's not against me. I will hold to the plans He has for me. Courageous, we will. Thanks be to God. All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low, I'm going to sing wherever I go. All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain 